but God loves me the way I am. Now, I'm constantly trying to improve myself, but I got news for you. God loves you right where you at. Right where you at right now. And I'm going to just tell you a little something. All of you, you're in the process right now. You're in the process of becoming what God wants you to be. See, the reason you wake up every day, the reason you keep waking up, is because God ain't through with you yet. If God was through with you, you wouldn't wake up no more. But he keeps waking you up because he still has something for you that you've yet to receive. But you have to start living your life in expectation. You have got to start expecting great things to happen for you in order for it to happen. It is the law of attraction. It is real. It is nothing fake about it. The Bible says a man is as he thinketh. If you live your life in expectations, that's what happens to you. If you live your life in despair, that's what happens to you. If you say all men are dogs, you're going to meet every last one of them. I'll never be rich. You won't. You won't. The moment you change the frequency that your tower emits, the moment you change that frequency, different things come back to you. I'm telling you this how it works. I'm going to just say this fast as I can. I'm going to let you go. If you change your attitude, change your altitude. Listen, the reason you came to this show today was to be entertained. But a lot of y'all came to this show, and I ain't because you needed to hear this. All I am is a piece of conduit. I'm a piece of pipe. God just tell me what to say. I don't pick what I'm going to say at the end of the show. God just tell me what to say. Somebody in here needed to hear this. Somebody, you just needed that little moment, man, to get you to thinking a little bit differently so you can get the life God got for you. God wants to show you all. He wants people that he can use in that example and say, hey, this is what I do for people. If you call on me and you believe in me, this is what I do for people. I raised my hand a long time ago. Use me. Show them, show them how you take an old hoop. Tell them how you take a street boy. Tell them, show how you can take somebody ain't got no education. Take me. Take somebody that don't even talk that good. Take somebody who flunked out of school on his third marriage, lost everything, lived in a car for three years. Take me and show somebody what you can do through me. Guess what he did? He picked me up. He put me in a world I knew nothing about. God will do the same thing for you. Change your attitude, you change your altitude. If you want to kill a big dream, tell it to a small-minded person. I told everybody at 10 years old I was going to be on TV. I had a little problem when I said that. I had a severe stuttering. I could not talk outside of my house. I went to school, church, anywhere. I locked up. I couldn't go to the store. I, I, I just stuttered profusely. It was a horrible experience. How many times has God showed you something in your imagination that you thought was so wonderful? And then you took it in there to your family and your friends and you shared it with them and they shot it down. You know why they shot it down? Because they couldn't see it. You know why they didn't see it? Because God ain't show it to them. He showed it to you. God put it in your imagination. He don't put it in other people's imagination. Stop telling your visions to other people because they're not going to see it. Why you think you keep imagining opening a business? Why you keep imagining graduating? getting a better job why do you keep imagining buying a house why do you keep imagining driving a really nice car why do you keep imagining getting rich one day why do you keep imagining that because god is talking to you he's showing you something that he has for you he puts it in your imagination man see god is good man you got to understand how good God is. He ain't playing with you. He the real deal. He created you 
and then he even showed you what he got for you. You got to start believing in your imagination. You got to start talking to him about this stuff you be seeing. But you have not because you ask not. So if you see the vision, the imagination, but you don't ask God for it, what you want him to do? He showed it to you. Faith without works is dead. So now you got to put in work. All of y'all sitting in here, you want a better life, correct? Have you, haven't you imagined a better life? Okay, who, who you think he showed it to? He showed it to you. Why you think he showed it to you? Because he want to give it to you. But if you don't work, if you don't ask him for it, he cannot give it to you because he created us with the power of choice. We make choices every day. If you decide that you will be poor, there's nothing I can do. You're going to be poor. If you decide to be rich today, who's going to stop you? Who? If you decide you want to be rich, all you got to do is start. Why not? Who's going to stop you? Unless you tell it to the wrong person. Mama, mama, listen to me. I'm going to be rich. Ain't nobody rich in this family. Go in there and sit down somewhere. Get yourself a good job. Oh, mama, you must be right. No, mama could be wrong. Because what you have in your imagination, God didn't show it to your mama. I'm sorry. He showed it to you. Listen to me. If y'all don't do nothing else, write everything you imagine down. Write it all down. Pray about it and watch what happens. Watch what happens. Because let me tell you something. If God can fix me, you have no idea who you're looking at. You have no idea what I've done. You have no idea what I've been through. You, you wouldn't even talk to me if you knew what I had to do to be here. But God is in the forgiving business. God is in the get your life together business. God is in the turn it around business. God is in the saving business. God did all that for me. So I'm telling you right now, if God can fix Steve Harvey and turn him into this, I bet he can turn you into that. If you want to be successful, and you want to be happy. Those are the two things that's common to most, most people. You're looking at a person who was neither one of those for a long period in my life now. It's a lot of, a lot of pain in my life. No more than nobody else, I just had a lot. But I learned along the way, everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing. That's all he's doing. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he's going to toughen you. If you got to be more caring along the way, he's going to let you have some trials come your way that's going to have to produce that in you. What happened in my life was getting where I've gotten to today and where I'm even headed to, I had to be tough. So he toughened me along the way. I had to learn how to appreciate a lot, so he took everything. To really understand the value of money, I had none. To just appreciate simple things, what I'm going to eat today, where I'm going to wash up at, where I'm going to bathe. He sent me through a trial of being homeless for three years. I lived in a car for three years. All of that that I was going through that I was tripping with, that I did not appreciate or understand, I understand it now, because I'm on the other side of them troubles. And I understand what all them troubles was for. And even though I did not understand or appreciate the route he took me on, it was the route I had to go on. See, the route you on right now is the route you got to take. And it's very uniquely yours. This thing you're going through, this just uniquely yours. You just got to understand you ain't the only one. You ain't the only one going through it. Now, in the order that it's going to happen, it's just yours. See, God made us very different. This is a, this God we got. God is amazing. He created you so individually. Do you know that it's close to 8 billion people on earth now? Do you know that it's almost 8 billion people on the earth? Do you know how many billions of people have died? Do you know 
that if you dig up all them people that have died and all the people that are presently here and every last one of them that he gonna make in the future, not one of you have the same fingerprint. Who do that? Who could possibly be so precise in his infinite wisdom that he created you so uniquely that ain't no two people got the same fingerprint. That's crazy, man. That's real crazy. Eight billion people, you can't duplicate it. The billions that done died, you can't duplicate it. And the ones that's coming will not duplicate it. God a bad boy, man. He's a bad boy. He's a bad dude, man. You know what I mean? People are funny though, man, the way they try to do business. Hollywood is an ugly business, man. It's not, it's not anything like any other job. They do what they want. And they create, they make up a reason. And a, a, a lot of it is, can just, you know, a guy just don't like you. But the one thing about me, man, I've always been resilient. I've never been afraid to reinvent myself. And here's, here's the key for everybody. When someone closes a door in your face, all you have to remember is when God allows them to close the door in your face, all God wants you to do is walk up the hall. It's some more doughs. You just got to walk up the hall because I can promise you he got a better door that he wants you to go through than the one that got shut in your face. That's a fact. That's a fact. But what happened to people is they stand there beating on the door. Open it back up. We're going to do a write-in campaign. Why are you leaving me? I got to have my job. What about my benefits? Hey, stop. The door is closed for a reason. Because God just wants you to walk up the hall because he got another door. It's bigger. And when you open it and get behind it, you ain't going to believe what's back there. But you will never get to it if you stand in front of that door crying. Please open it back up. Help me. My family. Stop. Go up the hall, man. Th these people that close doors in your face, they ain't the only door. They ain't the only door. God is the creator of all doors, man. I'm just going to see what else he got for me. I don't even worry about that. Here's another one. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Oh, this is a very dangerous one, young people, because now don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, that would depend on what your basket is made of, wouldn't it? If you got it in the right basket, you got to put all your eggs in one basket. How else you going to make it? Success is an all out assault. It's everything you got into one direction in order for it to be successful. You can't open up six businesses at the same time. You got to open up one, pour your all into that. You can't go get, you got to go to college to get a degree. You can't enroll in six colleges. You got to focus, man. Put all your eggs in one basket. Make your basket out of work, hard work, faith, prayer. Put all that in that basket, glue that thing together and put them eggs in that basket so you can be what you want to be because you're not going to be successful if you don't put all your effort into one thing. You ain't going to make it, man. Success is difficult. The road to success is always under construction. It ain't ever easy. It ain't clear. It ain't open. You got to do that and be wary of this one right here, though. Always have a plan B. Let me tell you why I never have a plan B. See, do this so you'll have something to fall back on. Oh, you can go do that, but do this so you'll have something to fall back on. Let me tell you something. In order to really be successful, people who really got it going on, they focused on one thing. Bill Gates did Microsoft until he got plenty of money. Now, he can do anything he want to do, but he did Microsoft. He did Microsoft. 
You can believe that the dude that came up with Google, he was making Google. He made Google. They made Yahoo. They, they did. They, they did that till it turned into something. Then they branched out. Plan B. In order to have a plan B, you have to take time away from plan A to prepare plan B. So when you take time off A, you're reducing the effort in your plan A. They asked me, but Steve, so has one of your plan A's ever failed? Yes. Yes, my plan A has failed. Did you have a plan B to fall back on? No, I did not. They said, well, damn, man, what'd you do? I got another plan A. I ain't never had nothing but the A plan. I make no preparation for failure. I ain't got no plan for B. I'm my own got B. I got A, man. I got A. I was going to tell these jokes until I turned them into a money-making venture. October 8th, 1985, I walked in Hilarity's Comedy Club. I won an amateur night for $50. I went to work the next day. I quit my job. My first wife said, this is ridiculous. We got these twins. You can't quit your job. I got to go. This is it. This is all I've been dreaming about. I see a way. A light bulb went on. Hey, man, when I won, when I won that night, I cried for an hour all the way home. I cried because it was like, man, God, I see it now. This is what I've been waiting on. I walked into one comedy club. won $50. Went to work next day selling Commonwealth life insurance, quit my job making $675 a week. I made $50. The first month in comedy, I made $150. The first year in comedy, I made $3,000. My wife left me. I saw that coming. I, saw I said, her and her mama, uh, her and her mama, uh, they made that joint decision together that I'll now, every time I used to drive home, you ain't going to ever be nothing. It took me years. I lost everything. I became homeless. I lived in a car for three years. But Lord have mercy. I just kept that plan A. I kept that plan A, man. I told these jokes. I told these jokes. I took a gig for 125 250 I drove 14 hours to make $175. Gas was way cheaper back then, so it, it made sense. I go out there and do the gig, man. Sent whatever money I could home. So now I'm homeless. I can't do nothing. Three years I lived in a car. Had an occasional hotel every now and then. But three years I lived in a car. You know what I kept doing? I kept telling them jokes. When my family members would catch me, Steve, come on home. I call home, ask for money. Steve, come home, get a real job. I said, no, I'm going to stay with it. I'm going to be all right. Can you just, can you wire me $50? Can you wire me 75 My brother said, don't ever call me no more, ask me for no more money. I ain't got nothing for you. You need to be a man and come home and get a real job. So I, I couldn't call nobody no more for help because they said they weren't going to help. So cool, I stayed out there. Look at me. And I ain't bragging. Look how God do that. God is amazing. If you keep the faith in the things that you cannot see, God got something for you. I ain't see this. I didn't see this when I was living in the car. I ain't see none of this. Man, you know, I'm an emotional dude. You know, I cry, man, because somebody asked me something. Steve, every time I look on TV, you crying. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you knew my trip, 
you cry too. Matter of fact, every time you see me, your ass all just bust out crying. But I kept the faith, I relied on God's grace, I kept that plan A, and I'm standing here today. And I say to everybody, if you learn those principles of success, I don't care where your life is today, the life you got planned for yourself, the one God got mapped out, way better than the one you got planned for yourself.